Brothers and sisters, let's welcome John and Emma Cosby. As is our custom, we always read the ensuing bulletin for the coming Sunday at staff meeting. Certainly for the staff to have the message in their hearts, but also for grammatical corrections. So, uh, Lou Jack, if you get your pen out, and Sharon, if you get your pen out, and uh, please uh, help John and myself with our grammar, please. John is entitled this incredible, incredible Walton. Wow. Remember those earlier days. I, can I wrote a brief introduction. First and foremost, I hold John Causey to be a very dear brother and friend. So it gives me unfathomable joy Come on. to share with you that John and Emma Causey officially placed membership in the City of Angels ICC on April 9, 2017, thus joining God's new sold out movie. as the first baptism of the Indiana State Campus Ministry. Wow. Emma was baptized through the efforts of the same campus ministry in 1982. Woo. They married in 1984. In 1989, the causes heard the call of God and entered the full-time ministry. During the 1990s, God used the causes to powerfully lead the Chicago Church, the London Church, and the metro region of the LAICOC, which we call the Southland region. After the ICOC's return to Mainline Church of Christ Theology in 2002, and the ensuing falling away of thousands after the Creed Letter in 2003, John became very involved in Hope Worldwide as a spokesman and board member. In 2010, John was elected a founding member of the ICOC's service team of eight, who worked in collaboration to oversee what remained of the ICOC, even though these congregations embraced autonomy. The service team does not have a set leader. Of note, John was re-elected to the service team every year until his resignation last fall. Also, John was the coordinator for the LA ICOC staff meetings. In addition to these charges, John discipled the church leaders of the ICOC's Asia Pacific and Oceania regions with a collective membership of over 10,000. With all of these responsibilities, John was arguably the most influential evangelist in the ICOC right. until his self-imposed sabbatical and resignation from all responsibilities in October 2016. During these years, our beloved sister Emma developed a dynamic leadership training program for mothers and daughters called Fine Pearls for Divine Girls. Please read John's remarkable account of how the Spirit led the causes into God's sold-out mood in this our gear right. of the impossible. Let's all stand out of reverence for God. Briefly. Come on, bro. As we read this first passage. Come on, bro. Come on. Remember those earlier days. After you had received the light. When you stood your ground in the great contest in the face of suffering. But we are not of those wow. who shrink back and are destroyed. No. But are of those who believe and are saved. Amen. Hebrews 10. Growing up, my mom would say, never forget where you came from. Because it can save you from where you might end up. I was born into a very conservative and religious family. All right. My grandfather, the great John Adam Coffey, was founder and pastor of a large Baptist church in the south side of Chicago, Illinois. Uh -huh. He was a visionary, a church planter, as he planted churches in neighboring states of Missouri and Indiana, where I was born. My grandparents had six sons, and five of them were ministers. Wow. <laughs> Amen. The exception was my father, John Adam Causey II. Oh, yeah. Dad worked for International Harvester and wow. moonlighted as an entrepreneur. Shortly after marriage, my parents were eager to have 
lots of sons. Yes. However, God has a sense of humor, right? Yes. Yes. Mom delivered five consecutive daughters. <laughs> Turning to God like Hannah, Mom vowed, Father, if you will but give me a son, when he is older, I will return him back to you in service. God answered her prayer, and John Adam Causey III was born. Me. Mom repeated this vow to me growing up, and my response was fear and complete resistance to religion. At 18 years old, I decided I would attend college and business school, and thus began preparing to follow in my father's footsteps. During the fall of my freshman year of university, I received the devastating news that my dad had advanced prostate cancer and was not expected to recover. I visited him from campus during the second weekend of October. Upon arriving back to campus that Sunday night, I received a call that my dad had just passed away at only 48 years old. Losing dad was devastating. As he was a major influence in my life, Later, after the funeral, I realized that seeing the effect of cancer on his, I realized, excuse me, later after the funeral, I realized that seeing the effect of cancer in his body was meant to be a scared straight moment for me. It worked. Come on. I gave religion a try. And so I joined the local campus choir and started going to church on Sundays. Come on, man. While all these changes made me feel better, and helped me come to peace with my father's passing. They did not address my sinful character of immorality, arrogance, filthy language, language, and selfishness. Wow. Those 10 months of becoming more religious left me looking better on the outside, but unchanged wow. within. In the fall of my sophomore year, God moved in a miraculous way. At that time, the Eastside Church of Christ decided to experiment with campus ministry. Greg and Teresa Jackson were hired to lead the charge. On Greg's first official visit to Indiana State University, he prayed for God to lead him to the right dormitory, for the elevator to open up on the right floor, and for a student's door to be open who would be open to the gospel. But Cromwell Hall was that dormitory. The ninth floor is where the elevator door opened. And my door was the only open door that morning. Wow. Greg walked in and invited me to what we called then soul talk, which is Bible talk now. We studied the Bible for six weeks, and I was the first campus baptism of the new Indiana State other students were baptized during my remaining three years. My mom, several family members, and the love of my life, Emma Jackson, became disciples. We were totally devoted to God's Word, to one-on-one -on -one discipling relationships, and to preaching the Word daily to all of our fellow students, friends, and family. Starting in 1982, our campus ministry started attending the new Boston World Mission Seminars, thus joining with Kip McKean and the Boston Total Commitment Movement to evangelize the nation. <laughs> Following graduation and two years of pure dating, the only kind of dating to have. <laughs> Emma and I married and began an adventure beyond what we would, uh, excuse me, we began an adventure beyond anything we had, we would have asked or imagined, wow. Ephesians 3, 22. Come on, bro. I worked for Ford Motor Company and then IBM. In 1986, I attended Sanford Graduate School to, produce, to pursue a master's degree in business. During this time, Em and I assisted Thomas Sheila Jones Whoa. as a campus leader couple with the planning of the Birmingham, Alabama church. <laughs> Upon completion of my MBA degree, I returned to work at Ford Motor Company in Indianapolis, Indiana. We served in the local church as family group leaders and Bible talk leaders. During this time, we received a call from the Chicago church leaders inviting us to serve in the full-time regional leadership ministry of the Southside Chicago Church. 
This would take us to the very city where my grandfather had built his church decades earlier. I then remembered my mother's father and gladly accepted the position. Through prayer and the power of God's word. Yeah. We grew from 90 members to 400 Woo! in three years. Kim McKean then personally invited us to serve in the Washington, D.C. church. Come on, do something. Beginning with 500 members, within three years, we saw the Spirit powerfully work, growing the church to 1,800 and having congregational worship services in Constitution Hall located in the center of Canada. Kip would challenge our faith again in 1994, calling us to move to Europe to lead the London Church and the United Kingdom Church. Come on, come on. We were the first African-American couple charged with leading Great Britain and the surrounding nations. God blessed our faith, our prayers, and our reliance on Him. And the church grew from 600 to almost 2,000 in less than three years. All of the churches in the United Kingdom experienced a time of refreshment and growth by God's grace and faith. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. In 1999, we were called to lead the metro region of the LA ICOC Church and received discipling from Kip and Elena. Hundreds of souls were saved as God increased our numbers from 350 to almost 1,000. Wow. I still fondly remember July 2001 when God blessed our region to baptize over a hundred people in one month. These were fruitful years. Amen, church? Em and I fully embraced the dream of, an evangel of the evangelization of the nations in one generation. 2003, we began a time of great challenge. During this year, two months after the Creek letter, the McKeans were unjustly fired as LA ICOC church leader wow. and of the entire ICOC. It was then that our LA regional leaders decided that we would no longer have a lead or senior evangelist to replace Kip's role in the LA church. In retrospect, I now understand that we sinfully decided that each region should have local independence autonomy and should operate and function locally. As a group, we did acknowledge that we should cooperate and function as eight equal parts of the larger LA church. We selected a congregational evangelist, not the same as a lead evangelist, as a congregational evangelist had no authority. Wow. He would coordinate our agreed upon church-wide activities with no discipleship or leadership or oversight within the group. However, this decision for local independence, local autonomy, and no formal, formal group discipleship structure later led to the breakdown of discipleship throughout the entire exactly church. Right. Right. Yeah. What Kip has taught now for almost 40 years is true. Autonomous churches beget autonomous disciples. Come on, John. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Sin of autonomy isolates disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Provides Satan with an open door. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, bro. The lion desires yes. to devour right. disciples. First yeah. Peter 1, 5 through 8. I personally want to take responsibility for my role in creating independence and this autonomous cloud within the LAICOC church. I deeply regret my influence in creating the unbiblical concept yeah. of non-authoritative 
wow. congregational wow. event. Amen. Come on, John. Come on. Come on. Come on, John. Come on, Today I sincerely apologize to the LAICOC <laughs> members. Come on, John. And to the LAICOC church. Mm. As I believe many members and leaders have been adversely affected by this decision yeah. and moved away yeah, right. from the life-changing, wow. healthy, there it is. There it is. discipling there relationships it is. Right yeah. that we all need <coughs> yeah. in our days. Yeah. Yeah. During the years of 2004 <coughs> through 2005, I maintained contact with the McKean's when God moved them to Portland, Oregon. I attended the first two Portland Jubilees wow. and observed Kip's leadership and continued commitment to church discipleship, central leadership, and a visionary mission to reach all nations with the gospel Amen. in one generation. Amen. However, in the fall of 2005, I silently pulled back from the McKings with expressed reluctance, but to my eternal shame, I signed two letters sinfully disfellowshipping Kip from our churches. Sadly, for 12 years, I had not followed up, sought contact, or pursued reconciliation with a brother who had meant so much and done so much in my spiritual life over the years. The scriptures teach. Though a righteous man may fall seven times, on, yeah. seven times he gets yeah. back there. Yeah. Proverbs 24, verse, 6, verse 16. God help us all. If in sinful judgment, we believe any disciple cannot get back Preach that. Oh, no. From 2015, to 2016, God began a period of discipline and discipling in my spiritual life. During this period, I traveled in excess of 200,000 wow. miles around the world. Multiple trips to Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Pacific Islands, as well as several U.S. domestic trips, serving the ICLC churches and Hope Worldwide. In June of 2016, I realized I had become very emotionally and spiritually tired from trying to help, but with little success. With the many serious challenges inside Hope Worldwide in our struggling churches, Gordon Ferguson, an ICOC elder and an outspoken opponent of the sold-out movement, stated, what I sense from my travels to be true in his book, My Three Lives. The story of one man and three movements. The ICOC in 2015 had 667 congregations overall, 381 baptisms, one to 10 people, and 122 had zero baptisms. Wow. Thus, our 667 churches, uh, of our 667 churches, 500, 503, 75% baptized, zero and 10, oh and ten people. Wow. And let me state the obvious here. When baptisms are few, things are not close to going well. Come on, bro. That's right. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. I discussed my exhaustion with our local staff, requesting some time off to spiritually recover. The staff was supportive. Yet others would not act upon or honor this request. So I tried to soldier on, only to realize that I was more than weary. I was completely burned out. Wow. <laughs> For me, it would require significant time away from ministry in order to spend time with God to revive and refresh my soul. So in October of 2016, I resigned from my role as Metro Region Leader of the LAICOC Church. I resigned from the ICLC service team. I removed myself from oversight and partnership roles with the churches in Oceania, Asia, and in particular the Philippines. For the next five months, 
spiritually, I devoted myself to prayer, fasting, Bible study, and wrestling with God to gain clarity and understanding of my spiritual condition and His future will for my life. This began a time of intense spiritual revelation, pain, loneliness, streams of tears, cries for God's mercy, and a plea for the Holy Spirit to fill up my empty heart and life. Today, I thank God for this time of suffering. Come on, come on, he has filled my heart with fire again, come on, refreshed my soul, and caused me to remember the core convictions of my conversion. Psalms 25 and 86 provided such a guiding light for me during this time. In the fall of 2016, I wrestled with this question. Why are the ICLC churches not growing, but instead filled with seemingly unresolved issues that wore me out? After studying the Word, I came to a deep conviction that central leadership is God's plan to lead His people so that they will not become like sheep without there it shepherd. Is. Uh, Numbers 27, 15 through 18. Come on, bro. Come on. After abandoning our father in the faith wow. kip, we became a group of churches led by ears. Wow. And not the visionary eyes that God had put in place. Wow. Come on, bro. Wow. So in January. 2017 followed another Bible study on reconciliation. God put it on my heart to reach out to Kim. I realized after all that had happened in 2003, it had now been 14 years. 14 years ago, this all happened. I immediately reached out for my phone and in tears apologized for my blindness of all that God was doing in the ICC churches, for being a part of all the judgment, for allowing years to pass, for the hurt, the pain that he and Elena had experienced by shaming them through a false disfellowship. Wow. Kim responded with warmth, yeah. wow. yep. openness, yeah. and forgiveness. Yeah. He expressed with humility all that God had put him through. Kip shared with me the lessons he needed to learn about humility, forgiveness, reliance on God, and mercy towards others. Amen. Early last month in March, Em and I were invited to dinner by Kip and Elena at their home. Following an incredible reunion. I wish I had time to talk about it. <laughs> I was refreshed and greatly encouraged by two days of discussions with Kip about his life. About his convictions. About the lessons learned from God. I will never forget that Kip and I took time to walk up Mount Hollywood. Oh, yes. Which he so affectionately calls yes. Mount Shalom. Yes. And on our knees crying together. We prayed about our lives and our families, the city of L.A., and the nations of the world. So I found Kip to be a confident leader. I could clearly see how God had transformed Kip's natural confidence to now be in God. There you go. I was very encouraged to see the mercy, the grace, and the love for all in the ICOC, in spite of the hurt and separation that Kip and his family had experienced. Come on, Kip. I expressed to Kip that I was proud of his relationship with God and his inspiring transformation. Amen. I let him know my happiest and most fruitful times were serving under his leadership. That's right. Amen. And that as it was in the early days, he remains a visionary leader and God's man for this generation. Yeah. 
Come on, bro. As God would have it, the next day I visited the LA staff meeting <laughs> on the ICC. I was blown away by you guys. I was blown away by what my eyes had saw. I witnessed a fire in the scene. The zeal while sharing about the previous week's baptism and an incredible warmth in the fellowship. And then I remembered those earlier days after we received the light. Come on. As a college student in God's modern day. This was the church that I was baptized in. I was so inspired and excited by the mature disciples and the scores of young 19 to 23 year olds in this fellowship. <laughs> Who were passionate to be in the full time ministry. I was very convicted that my own judgmental heart and lack of faith did not allow me to Whoa. see what God was doing through the McCain's leadership in the sold out movement. Come on, John. After a long fellowship, I left that day and prayed most of the day, thanking God for what my eyes and heart had just seen. Wow. I was reminded that day that there is a huge difference yep. between a church that forms a fellowship right. and a movement of God. Yeah. On another occasion, I apologized to my friend Kip yeah. that I was the one who sent the evangelists and elders to Hilo, mm -hmm. Hawaii, wow. in September 2006. Oh, wow. I just figured I need to get it all out. <laughs> Kip and Elena's effort to help young ministry leaders, Kyle and Joanne Bartholomew, revive the Hilo Church. Ironically, I have come to understand that this singular action caused Kip and the Portland leaders to conclude that God was saying to them that there was no remedy. 2 Chronicles 36, 15 through 16, to cure the ICOC. Thus, from this incident, the spirit sparked a new move. Yes. The International Christian. Today I clearly see that the new movement is the movement of God. And that Kip is God's man for this generation. And always has been. Today I'm very thankful for this journey. Come on. I've made many mistakes. I've fallen down many times. Come on, God. Yet God has graciously mm. raised me to my feet yep. again. Amen. I'm looking forward to the next chapter in my spiritual journey with God. Oh, yeah. Come on. The ICOC has our core convictions. Number one, central leadership which gives direction that produces total unity among churches. Yeah. Number two, discipling is a command of God. There you go. And number three, the God-given vision of the evangelization of the nations in our generation. 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. God wants all men to hear the gospel and come to a knowledge of the truth. My heartfelt desire is that we, that we understand that we've lost 14 years. And that we dare not waste anymore. That's right. My dream and my prayer. It's for all disciples all to be gloriously wow. united. Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine, imagine if our dear brothers and sisters in the ICOC imagine. Imagine. would return 
to the radical biblical convictions on leadership, discipleship, and the evangelization of the nation in our generation that we all shared in the 80s and the 90s. Imagine. Imagine Come on. the glory to Jesus if one by one disciples remembered. Boom. Those earlier days after we received the light and change their convictions yes. and come together in the movement of God. Imagine. Imagine. Come on. Let's say it all together. Imagine. The joy of hugging each other here on earth and singing with each other when we all make it to heaven. If what I share touches your heart and resonates with you, Emma and I would like to humbly be a bridge of Come reconciliation. On. Come on. For anyone, leaders included. There you go. Who have passed hurts from the McKeans. Come on. Or from the with, uh, from the days when they led the ICOC. Mm. Kip and Elena have graciously yes. offered to sit down with us. <laughs> and anyone who in good faith longs to be Come on. We know our hearts were healed and reconciled to them as they explain their spiritual journey and sincerely apologize for their shortcomings in past series. So we know that firsthand. Em and I are revived yes. and are exceedingly honored to be a part of the ICC. Excitingly, in 10 years, the Spirit has multiplied the 42 sold out Portland disciples yeah. that planted the city of angels. Yes, come on. In May 2007, to now over 5,000 disciples. Yeah. You are now. 76 churches yes. yep. in 31 nations yep. on all six populated continents of the world. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, clearly this is not a fellowship, right. but clearly this is a movement of God. Yes. Yeah. And I say to you, to God be the glory. right now the people that I want to see follow your example. Yeah. 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 People we love so much. Yeah. People who baptized us. <laughs> and uh, you are truly uh, a hero and career yeah. man. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. We have uh, some small gifts for you. First is a uh, Gift basket of fruit. You know you're going to be a fruit basket. <laughs> and also, uh, what we have here are the uh, our ICCM 
pins. Wow. Uh, the red symbolizes the blood of Christ. Yes. That all ministry leaders need to shed. And uh, Leanne's going to put it on your wife and I'm going to put it on you. Okay. Welcome to the City of Angels Church yes. and the ICCF. Yeah.